Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to take a very brief look at the game Monopoly Millionaire. This game is for two to four players, ages eight and up, with the average play time clocking in in about 60 minutes. Now, in standard Monopoly, the object of that game was to try and bankrupt the other players. In Monopoly Empire, a game that I recently covered, players were racing to be the first to build their tower. In this version of Monopoly, players are going to be trying to reach a million in cash first in order to win the game. Let's just take a quick moment to look at the components and see how the game is played. Now, as you can see, the components in this game are slightly different than those found in the core game. Over here on the left, you have the mover pieces. These are the pieces that the players will be moving around the board in order to buy properties and try and earn money. Now, um, as you can see, each color has three different pieces to them. There are four sets. Again, the, the maximum player count in this game is four. So one player will pick the gray set, uh, one player will pick the red, one player will pick the green, and one player will pick the blue if four people were playing the game. Now, um, as you can see, there are three different sizes. Um, these are the different lifestyle tiers that players will be um, upgrading their uh, mover piece to as the game progresses. Players will start off as this uh, little rinky-dink um, paper airplane if they happen to be gray and eventually become this airplane. If players happen to be playing as the red set, um, they'll start off as this little go-kart and upgrade their mover piece to this limo. Um, this little scooter will turn into a large motorcycle, and this rinky-dink little boat here will uh, turn out to be this big boat. Now the game also includes um, a bunch of these red hotels and greenhouses. Nothing new if you're um, a regular fan of Monopoly. But for those of you that haven't played Monopoly before, houses just simply serve to upgrade the properties on the board just so that they can charge more rent should another player land on them. You've got two dice here for movement. You've got these title deed cards. Again, if you're familiar with Monopoly, you'll know what this does. These basically just help players keep track of who owns what property, and each card will list what the rent uh, cost is um, should another player land on that space, depending on how many houses are situated there, and so on and so forth. Now, instead of paper money in this game, you've got these... I don't know, they're cardboard tiles. I don't know what the developers were going for on this one. But there's six different denominations, as you can see. Um, there's a bunch more in the box. Now, beside that, you've got uh, three little decks here. The uh, deck along the top is probably the one that's newest uh, to the um, brand as a whole. This is the Fortune deck. Basically, one of these will be placed on each of the property spaces at the beginning of the game. And as players land on them, they'll just simply follow the instructions um, and then do whatever it says to do. In this case, um, share Skyrocket, buy or auction this space, and then collect 100 k from the bank, use now. So yeah, this, this adds a little bit of variety to the game. And of course, um, Monopoly wouldn't be Monopoly without your chance and community chess cards. In this case, though, you've got this chance deck and this millionaire lifestyle deck. And um, yeah, there's nothing really fancy about it, except in this case, there's actually um, some cards that um, will reward or penalize players based on their tier. So if a player is the rinky-dink little paper airplane over here, I keep using that word, but if players are the uh, lowest tier uh, mover piece, they'll have to follow the instructions listed under this particular tier on the card. If players are upgraded fully, the players will pay attention to this number over here. So there's a little bit of a difference between um, this version and the standard Monopoly. Okay, now as you can see, um, this board looks a lot like the standard Monopoly, um, except for the fact that there are only eight spaces going across instead of ten on each side, so players will lap the board a lot faster. Now to set up the game, uh, you just simply put the bank in the middle of the board. You can put the uh, Lifestyle Millionaire and the Chance cards, uh, shuffle them up and put them in their appropriate spaces. And uh, you also shuffle up the Fortune cards and place one on each of the property spaces. Um, after that, uh, each player will choose a color and pick the uh, lowest uh, tiered piece and put it on the go space to start. Each player also receives a total of 372k. Um, basically, that's just two of each of these money tiles. Now, because this Monopoly spin-off is very similar to the core game, in the sense that players will be rolling dice and moving their mover pieces around the board to try and acquire these various properties, I'm just going to simply opt to cover what makes this game unique. 
For starters, um, the uh, mover pieces can actually be upgraded, as I was explaining earlier during the components bit of this video. Um, as players pass go, they'll not only earn a particular salary, but they'll also be allowed to pay 50k to the bank in order to upgrade their mover piece. Um, let's just say for the sake of argument that Red was passing go right now, and um, because of that, uh, Red would earn a particular salary. This is the one tiered um, or one star mover piece. So Red would earn in this case 150k. But Red could give 50k of that back to the bank in order to upgrade the mover piece uh, to this little car. Now again, let's say for the sake of argument that Red uh, was passing go and Red would earn uh, instead of 150k but the three star salary is worth 200k. Red would earn 200k for passing go and um, would also be allowed to pay 50k to the bank um, in order to upgrade that piece further to the limo. And now from here on out every time Red passes go, Red will uh, receive 250k. Upgrading the mover piece does more than just grant the player more money every time they pass go, but it also affects the way certain cards play out. Um, if a player were to land on the Millionaire Lifestyle space, for example, or onto the Chance space, um, some cards may come up that will um, ask the player to observe a particular value depending on their tier. In this case, this Millionaire Lifestyle card says, Earn interest on your millions. Collect either 25k if you happen to have the one star mover piece, uh, 50k if you happen to be the three star mover piece, and 100k if you happen to be the five star uh, mover piece. In this particular chance cards case, hit the casino to win roll one uh, to win 100k roll. You have to roll doubles if you're a one star uh, mover piece. You have to roll between an 8 and a 12 for a three star mover piece, and you have to roll between a 5 and a 12 for a five star mover piece. So, in essence, it pays to upgrade your mover um, as the rewards will be a bit more lucrative. Another gameplay mechanic that's uh, pretty new to this series uh, are these fortune cards. Basically, as players land on these properties for the very first time, they'll pick up the fortune card that is situated there. Um, and follow its instructions. Now not all fortune cards are the same. In fact, some can be used immediately while others can be held on to. In this case, this is a free house uh, fortune card. Build a house for free on any complete color set that you own. Keep until needed. So as you can see, these add a little bit of variety to the game. Another thing worth mentioning, uh, when you land on a property space for the first time, you not only resolve the fortune card there, but you also have to either buy it outright or um, create an auction for the other players. Um, you can't just uh, you know, land on the space and then just not let the property go off um, and remain unsold. It has to be sold right after you resolve the fortune card. So properties will be earned pretty quickly in this game. Now, as normal, the person that manages to win that particular property, either uh, via the uh, buy it now or the auction feature, um, will receive the uh, appropriate title card. And again, these are very similar to uh, Stainer Monopoly. You've got the name of the property on top, the amount of rent it charges, um, how, many, uh, how much rent it charges depending on how many houses are situated there, the mortgage value in case you want to mortgage the property for some cash, if you want to buy um, any houses or hotels, um, that's the cost down here. Um, also, something worth mentioning, if a player owns a complete set um, but has no houses on that set, um, the rent will be doubled. So if uh, this red player had all three red properties uh, but had no houses on them, the rent would instead be 70k instead of 35k. While it's not very common, it is possible for a player to go bankrupt in this game should they land on a space with a lot of real estate on it. Um, the first thing that a player will need to do whenever they do uh, go bankrupt is uh, sell any hotels or houses that might be on um, any of their properties for half of the price that they paid for them. To determine that, again, each um, title uh, deed card here will tell the player um, how much they paid originally for um, houses and hotels. In this case, treetop retreat, houses cost 55k each and hotels uh, 55k each. So, um, you know, after selling your houses and hotels, if that is still not enough, players will have to start um, mortgaging their properties, just like in regular Monopoly. And again, on the back of each title card, um, tells you how much the property can be mortgaged for. In this case, Treetop Retreat, mortgaged for 50k. 
If that's still not enough, uh, players can try and uh, you know make deals with the other players by selling property or selling any of their uh, millionaire lifestyle cards and so on and so forth. If they can't uh, come to terms or make any sort of special deal, they are eliminated from the game. And that's honestly all there is to it. Uh, players will just continue taking turns, moving their uh, mover piece around the board, acquiring properties, and uh, collecting money every time they pass go. And the first player to um, amass a million in cash will win the game. And there you have it. That's just a very brief look at the game Monopoly Millionaire. I didn't cover all of the rules found in the manual, but this should just give you a general overview as far as how the game is played. You can check out my review at www.dadsgamingaddiction.com or you can simply click on the link in the below description that will take you there as well. This is Vince, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.